come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're, you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. Hey, you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen Michaela! by... What do we watch tonight? We watched High Tension. Ooh. Oh, Tension? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> From the year. 2003. Ooh. Uh, directed by... Alexander Aja. Uh, written by... <laughs> Alexander Aja and his writing partner, Gregory Levasseur. Okay. And... Maybe stolen from a Dean Cohn's book, so maybe, maybe he, maybe he deserves some writing there credit. Yeah. Maybe. yeah, yeah. All right, tell me a little bit about that because I guess we got to go into this. Uh, that that became a thing after the release of this movie. Uh, it was revealed that uh, what Dean Cohn's uh, novel Intensity apparently, like the first half of this movie, is basically identical. Don't know. I haven't read the book. Hmm. Um, and when asked about it, like if Dean Cohn's was going to like sue, he was like, "That movie is so repulsive. It like doesn't even match up to the quality of my book, so it wouldn't be worth my time associating myself with such trash." Like he went on a big thing about yes. how this is lowbrow compared to his work. But so. Aja did admit that mm-hmm. he was familiar. He has with read the, the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so I guess. Um, so this is, came out in 2003, mm-hmm. but um, High Tension is generally regarded as one of the f- pioneers or first on this, these shores mm-hmm. of a whole subgenre of the horror film called French extremism. Or Correct. French extreme. Okay, so where does that come from? Where did it start? And what are we talking about when we say <laughs> French extreme? So... French extremism was the early 2000s till about 2010 or 11. So it only lasted about a decade. So it's it's kind of like the other side of the coin to our American torture porn, right? So while that was happening for us in the United States, this is this was what was happening in France. And it really focuses on like three major things. There's usually some sort of sexual liberation or exploration of some sort. There is just like brutal torture. And then there's like a psychosis that goes with that. So... Whereas, like, American torture porn is very much like, ooh, look how fucked up this is. Like, that's the statement of those movies, right? Like, there's nothing beyond that. Uh, French extremism is more like, what kind of psychological damage does that torture do? Mm. And there was a lot of those movies in those times, and Vincent Cassell was in most of them. So, (laughs) good for him. Yeah, I remember what, uh, Shaitan. That's, yeah, Shaitan. Shaitan walked so Midsummer could run. Yeah. Yeah. When was uh, Irreversible? That was uh, mm. 2001, I b- believe. Okay. Uh, that is cons- that's debated to be French extremism or not. Some people say it is. I think most things Gaspar Noe makes are French extremism, so that yeah. counts to me. Um, but some other French extremist movies are Inside, mm-hmm. um, Caché or Hidden, depending on how you saw it. Frontiers. Frontiers, Martyrs, right, Them. Martyrs, yeah. Martyrs. Irreversible, okay, yeah. yeah. And then, like, there's runoff movies, too, like movies that kind of came in at the tail end or weren't necessarily made by a French filmmaker but fit the template. Like, I consider Funny Games a French extremist film, even though it's technically not. Good Night, Mommy, I would consider mm. a French extremist, even though it's technically not. Uh, and Raw is, I feel like, That's kind a of a movie. runoff yeah. Yeah. Right. Of that. They're still doing that. Yeah. Uh, Baz Moi and mm-hmm. uh, like Titan is a new movie that, yeah. you know. Correct. Um, if I'm saying that right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, because it seems like, you know, the the this, these are all kind of, um, there was something going on in the 2000s. I guess that's what we've been kind of talking about, like mm-hmm. for the past couple of months um, with our movie choices. Mm-hmm. It's like the 1990s mainstream Hollywood gave us these kind of neutered horror movies. And the two thousands was like this, uh, you know, the pendulum swinging the other way. Yeah. Right. And it seemed like there was a, a couple of events. I mean, obviously the, you know, September 11th, 2001 and the subsequent, the way that I remember it, the subsequent like beheading, beheading videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, like and then that. like the, just what was coming out about like our own like prisoner camps in America, you know, like Abu Ghraib and all that stuff. Not j- the journalist beheadings and like not only are, is this happening to our people, but oh shit, we're committing it to like that idea really pushed forward torture porn. And there was also like, um, 
there was this, I think, like in in film, there was this kind of thing that like the seventies, where the last time that like uh, movies had some kind of grit and realism, and that was real horror. You know, mm-hmm. they started looking back to the seventies. Which is why I think 2003 was the, the same year this came out in France. Mm-hmm. Uh, here we had the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Correct. Um, when was House of a Thousand Corpses? That was 2003 also, I right? I believe so. Saw, I yeah. want to say, was also 2003. Yes. It's ram. It's starting. Two, it's yeah. kicking yeah. off. 2003 yeah. is mm-hmm. the magic horror year. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like... Well, I mean, it was it was cool to be alive in that time. Because mm-hmm. you had diverse stuff like The, the Descent or Dog Soldiers. You had The Ring, you know, coming from major hollywood Correct. studios but there's this kind of tilt back to the 70s and clearly the texas chainsaw massacre is like a heavy influence on this movie definitely right um mm-hmm. so who's alex Aja or alexander Aja? i mean if you've seen a horror movie in the past 20 years you've there's a good chance you've seen an alex Aja movie uh you know uh the hills have eyes remake so that was after this he came mm-hmm. stateside because mm-hmm. that's basically i think the goal of um you know because the the French um, filmmaking apparatus is not like a Hollywood um, studio system. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to go to multiple entities in order to try and get funding for your movie. Right. However, in France, you do have the one guy who's made it big, and that's super producer Luc Besson. Yes, Son, yeah. whose ex-wife is in this movie. <laughs> But not Mila Jovovich. No, nope, my one. Okay, there you go. She's one of the stars. <laughs> yeah, from 1990 to 97, she was married to him. Okay. So, mm-hmm. um, so they went to Luc Besson to get uh, funding mm-hmm. for the movie. Um, but there's this goal of kind of like exporting it, right? And then the goal then being go to America and make American movies. So he did. He, I mean, he partnered up with Wes Craven. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because The Hills Have Eyes, I think, is generally regarded as like one of the better. There was like Dawn of the Dead, uh, Texas Chainsaw and Hills Have Eyes all came out like around the same yeah. time. Right. The Hills Have Eyes remake like, oh, is good. It's good. Yeah. It's pretty brutal. I re- you know, we'll, we'll we'll touch on it. We'll come cover it someday in the show. But like, yeah. I remember a lot of controversy around that movie when it came out. Yeah, because it seemed out of time. I mean, this is the thing. I remember Rob Zombie was saying when he made House of a Thousand Corpses that he was telling like the 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 financiers, you know, it's like I want to make something gritty and brutal, like a '70s movie. And he said the studio Universal at that point kind of gave him the okay to do it. But he's like later, he's like those people didn't have a frame of reference for the kind of grindhouse, right. uh, you know, brutality mm-hmm. that he was talking about right. when they saw it. You know, they were like, mm-hmm. holy crap. Yeah. So we're kind of going back to like uh, the gore, gore, heavy gore effects and stuff like that. Sorry, yeah. you were going to no, say uh, Alex Aja. Yeah, Piranha 3D, uh, Mirrors. Mm. This is where the wheels are starting to wobble again. Like it's, it's, we're not too sure about where this is going. So Mirrors, Horns. Horns, right. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately. Horns. Crawl, which we talked about on our mm-hmm. end of the year episode Crawl's last great. year. You can check great. that out. And then uh, I still have not watched it yet. Oxygen, that Netflix movie that he put out this year. Did he direct that? Uh. Yeah. Okay, because I saw one that was a because it seemed to me he's his, written a lot of horror stuff too that he yeah, didn't necessarily direct. He also uh, produced uh, P two and wrote it with his writing partner, which is uh, directed by a guy who stars in this movie, yep. Frank Calhoun, mm-hmm. who also did the Alex Aja produced uh, remake of Maniac. Correct, mm-hmm. um, and he did a uh, script pass on that as well. So it's like Aja had this kind of career trajectory right where it's like he's a a french filmmaker makes this movie that kind of catches attention of hollywood Mm -hmm. they bring him over he does his first movie here is a huge hit hills of eyes then he gets to do mirrors which wasn't like the promotion on that movie was huge oh i I remember remember. the mark i've seen trailers for that movie constantly and that was a remake of like a south korean horror movie so he or i i I think Mm -hmm. was Kiefer sutherland in that Yes. yes okay and then after that was Piranha 3D, mm-hmm. which I believe that was also like yeah, a which sizable was, hit. Which was big, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone but then wanted to see that. Horns went like, it was one of the direct-to-video release, kind yeah. of direct-to-screen. Because no, re- no one had read that Joe Hill book, I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> something. It was just like, it had Daniel Radcliffe yes. in it coming off this Woman was in the, Black. Yeah. And, yeah, I was going to say, this was at the start of him making unique choices yeah. after <laughs> Harry Potter during that time. Oh, Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, 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 yeah trying yeah, to yeah, shed yeah. that image, yeah. 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 
And then Alex Aja, Aja made a movie called The Ninth Life of uh, Hugo Drax or something that like that. That sounds awful. It was terrible. It had Jamie <laughs> Dornan in it. it was, oh, it was no. That's horrible. a problem right there. Yeah. And no one saw it. And I'm like, okay, that's it. And then he started making like shorts for, um, what was that like short-lived uh, thing that was a Jeffrey Katzenberg or somebody came up with this like, we're going to make this. Quip? It was it Quib or no, Quibby? No, no. Or Quibby? Like oh my God! Was he signed to Quibby? I mean, yeah, every, everybody everything. in Hollywood was signed to Quibby at Quibby. one point, but <laughs> yeah, because he was going to re- remake, uh, re- do a Hollywood remake of Tomie, the Japanese thing All for right. Quibby, and then Quibby disappeared. So yeah, where's Alex Aja now? Oh, crawl. Like I said, Oxygen just came out this year okay, too. So oxygen. yeah, okay. which which uh, Oxygen? Like the log line I just read for it said that it was someone who is like in a sleep tank in like a spaceship wakes up early. Oh, and so I'm like, and apparently it's like, it's like a bottle movie where it takes place mostly in one room or in the tank or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I've seen Buried. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I, I, yeah, I've seen this, but I, I'll check it out eventually. Yeah. Like, I'm always willing to give his movies a chance because what, there's like a 50-50 shot. It could be great. What, you know, uh, what's the genre? What's is it? Horror? It's a horror is it movie. Science yes. fiction? Okay. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, um, so high tension or how do you say it in French? Oh, tension. There, there you All go. Right. Sorry, I'd be in my mouth. And <laughs> the original <laughs> title that I heard it distributed under. Which is a real spoiler. Switchblade Romance. Yeah, I did actually see a poster. Oh, that. Yeah. That. Bad title and a spoiler. Yeah. Hmm. It sounds like a movie from like 1997, doesn't yeah, it? I was say, it's <laughs> just like, the, yeah, some old road, road movie. Yeah. Where they're knocking people. It's Bonnie and Clyde, basically. Yeah, yeah exactly. Romance. Because I first got wind of this movie because this was, you know, in the age of the uh, film festival, the rebirth of or it was the age of the film festival where you had bloggers online writing about like they'd go to film festivals and write about the stuff that they saw. And the movies that would come out of those would usually do something. But um, it was released in 2003, but didn't make it here. Uh, Lionsgate put it out in 2005. Mm-hmm. Oh. So even though it was on like the front end of this stuff, Americans mm-hmm. didn't get it. I got like a bootleg or something yeah. back in I think I watched a bootleg before. the first time too. Yeah. So it was picked up by Lionsgate and distributed here, but there was some alterations made to the movie. Yeah, I remember it being a lot less violent. Like Yeah, so do I. Not, it was uh it's very bloody. Yeah, not that there were scenes missing, they were just much shorter. Yeah, much and less more severe. cut down. Yeah. And yeah, there were some there were mm-hmm. some chunks. I don't remember mm-hmm. him stepping on the dude with the axe. There was a lot more in the car scene at the end. Yeah. And they also altered the dialogue. So it's like it's this really weird um half French because the original movie's completely in French. Which is the version we watch. We watch the unrated French language the, original like, the way it's meant to be seen. It, right. Right. The American version uh, dubs so uh, Cecile de France. Mm-hmm. Uh, her character is in the American version, an American student who has a French friend and goes to v- visit uh, her family's farm. And so mm-hmm. she's American in that one. So they alter the dialogue and then mostly it's. Sub- Why does that need to be changed? Like, what does that matter to the so movie just, at all? Like, they don't want to make the film so f- <laughs> appear so foreign to general audiences. <laughs> yeah, because I think there still was like. There's least- so much of this movie that doesn't even have dialogue. Yeah. Like, does it matter? There are long stretches <laughs> yeah. with no dialogue. Like, yeah, when she started talking again, like, holy shit, I haven't yeah. heard anybody speak uh, Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. um, I remember really wanting to see a movie called Brotherhood of the Wolf, which was yes. another French movie, um, and they did eventually bring it over here, but it was like this kind of like below the radar, you know, release, even though it's like a huge budget, you know, movie, but right. because it's French, you know, it was right. still kind of, even though we were getting, America. Um, America. but yeah, but we, there was like inroads, I think Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, yeah. kind of opened inroads to Hong Kong or Chinese uh, martial arts Mm -hmm. you know movies and so there were big you know hero america uh, allows like one movie every five years the subtitles that they're willing to watch like right now it's parasite you know we all agreed to watch that yeah exactly and then you know that'll have its run for the next couple years and then we'll find a new one but that's it lamb lamb was uh, okay um (laughs) so they're still out colin how many people were in the theater with you when you saw Well, nobody goes to see movies anymore that's what i'm saying like you're i'm saying as a society isn't watching lamb is what i'm saying the way they watch parasite you know so why don't you lay out? Uh, yeah, we didn't pick lamb, not, not its ear. <laughs> well, I mean, unless you know more about like how we got to high tension or how they came up with it or what the. No, okay. I, I, that's all I got for you. <laughs> all right. So this is a movie that I guess um, 
how can we say this? There's going to be spoilers, obviously, as we talk. Major about Major spoilers. It. Uh, and it is a movie that uh, it, it's most effective the first time through. Yep. Uh, so we are going to. I mean, maybe we'll split this in half or whatever. But why don't you tell us, like, what what is going on in high tension? So we have Marie and Alex, and they are best friends, and they're driving to Alex's parents' house, who live apparently way out in the country, like a nine hour drive or something. Cause they drive all day long. Yeah. On a uh, four mile field road. So they're like really in there. Yeah. Um, out in the country in France and they're going there to study for the weekend, which like, this is already where I'm like, what? Because the time you spent driving, you could have just been studying mm-hmm. where you live. I, I get there's distractions and you said you're in like a big city, but like you're going to spend nine hours to drive to a farmhouse to study yeah. when you can go just... to a library yeah yeah that's <laughs> yeah. literally what they're for yeah yep. <laughs> um and her parents live out in the country we see a gross dude in an old mad max rusty truck mm. yeah um but that's what i think like american audiences would equate this to like the jeepers creepers truck or something like that yeah it's very uh old and feels like it's like an iron cage on wheels it draws it's, attention it's, it's, yes it's because that's what Old I was wondering. Up, like, huge. Yeah, is it like a... Uh, it looks like a cattle truck. Do you or guys see truck? this? Like driving around on the road? Yeah, if we saw it today, we'd be like... That's people a attention truck. truck. There are dead people in that <laughs> truck right now, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, now that you say, do you see this truck? That brings up my first question in the movie is, is the truck real? Right. Also well, curious. <laughs> Holly, this is why I wanted to bring this to the freak show. Yeah. These are the questions I've had I was, since I watched this like, movie. I have so many fucking questions about this movie. I'm afraid I, I probably won't have answers. Yeah. Though. So, I, but, I, but, you know, I want to talk it out. Yeah, I, we're I all putting like our feet up on the out. therapist couch So I was like, right how, quick, how quickly into this are we going to spoil this movie? Uh, we're, we're, we're lowering the spoiler bar. Yeah. I well, I don't know. Do you want to go, like, to the halfway point or something and then... Say yeah, like, we can okay, we can what, move along with the, with the plot yeah. of what yeah. happens. Okay. Go ahead. First, so, on first yeah. viewing of it, this yep. is what it looks so like. So they dude. they get to Alex's parents' house. It's her mom, her dad, her younger brother, and her dog, and they hang out, go to bed. Uh, she takes a shower in front of it. Alex takes a shower in front of an open window, like you do. That's France. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. It's France. It's France. <laughs> yeah. See, that uh, is true. Used it once, and I'm batting a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Marie goes outside and like watches her shower. Yeah, she catches because she's secretly in love. Secretly, well, I'm guessing d- like they're Sean, friends, but <laughs> you're kind of spoiling it a little bit here, dude. <laughs> like, oh, we dropped the bar. All right, all right. But very, but very, very early on, there's definitely some sexual tension in yeah. this relationship in some capacity. We're just not sure. But it's only going oh, one yet. direction. Yeah. Right. You know? These conversations about uh, You're a Alex. Well, yeah, and Alex <laughs> talk about men she'd like to right. see and everything mm-hmm. and all that. And, mm-hmm. and Alex is kind of, uh, or Marie is kind of uh, messing with her. You can tell she's jealous. Mm-hmm. And there's also the movie starts off with a key line of dialogue that, you know, it went past me the first time I saw it. But it's because I guess it starts with what you assume is like a flashback or something. Right. It starts off in it looks like uh, Marie. She's all bloody and running through the woods. And then where she's seen in a uh, hospital mm-hmm. setting, mm-hmm. all bandaged up, Stapled mm-hmm. up and everything. Yeah. And saying like, nothing will ever keep us apart again. Nothing will ever keep us apart again. Mm-hmm. And then she wakes up in the car and she says, I had a weird dream. I dreamed that I was uh, running through the woods and I was being chased by this guy. Or I don't even mm-hmm. know if she says that. She says it's weird. She's, I feel like I was chasing myself. Yeah, she mm-hmm. says she was being chased, and her friend's like, well, who was chasing you? She said, that's the crazy part. I was chasing myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which Holly was on her first watch of this, so I'm sure that mm-hmm. sent off all sorts of spidey sense uh, tingles. <laughs> um, but I, I almost would suggest to you that the movie doesn't play fair. But okay. Mm-hmm. With it the, does with not. The, okay. <laughs> so... Um, all right, so we're at the house, yep. and uh, she watched her shower. Right, goes so, upstairs, starts jerking it. Well, there, because even before that, there's a <laughs> shot of her, and I'm like, is this trying to tell us something? Of course, on second mm-hmm. viewing, right? There, you you see the shot of uh, Marie's point of view of Alex in the shower, mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. see that Marie is sitting in the swing, smoking a cigarette, watching this. Mm-hmm. And then you cut back to the shot of the the shower window, mm-hmm. and back to the swing, and nobody's there. Mm-hmm. And it's like. Okay, what are we, what are we doing here? What are you saying here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Then she starts jerking it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And this she just went back inside, Colin. 
<laughs> That's all. <laughs> to rub one out. Yeah. To rub yeah. one out. <laughs> and this seems to summon her pent up sexual release mm-hmm. seems to summon uh, the guy from the cornfield yep. who arrives in his. So uh, we're checking that first box on that French, French extremity there. The sexual like, you know, <laughs> celebration <laughs> and, you know, liberation here. Yeah. Did we mention. So. OK, so we saw him in his truck. Did we say yep. what he was doing? Holly? <laughs> oh yeah, um, he was skull fucking. Yeah, he was yes. a severed head. Yes, yep. mm-hmm. that yep. is the act of yep. getting off with these with a severed head. Okay. Which, which let's <laughs> let's remember this scene, and when we get to the end of the movie, let's talk about <laughs> what we think this means. Right, to the there were the some movie. red flags, yeah. so we'll come back yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah. we'll Even circle right we'll circle here. back to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. So it's like Reanimator, but backwards. <laughs> it's a reverse reanimator. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So this is, um, I guess, uh, from this point on, like the guy knocks on the door and the terror begins. And like, it's a home the- invasion, which like the French extreme loves. Most of their movies are like home invasions. It's all about mm-hmm. like the terrors we inflict on each other as human beings. Sure, you know, sure. like lots of home invasion stuff. Do they have a big home invasion problem in France? Does anyone know? Um, well, if I don't know that, but if this helps explain it, when I was doing my research for this, they said that during this time, there was a really big rise in like right wing extremism in France. Got so it. if they're like right wing extremists in America, that means they're all about like defending your property and like gun rights and like, right. you know, like we have people in this country that fantasize about like getting in a chance to shoot somebody on their property, you right, know? So yeah. like, I think there's probably something there but there's i don't a parallel yeah, yeah. yeah but i it. but i would be curious to know like if they do have mm-hmm. like a bad problem like right. that you know or i mean i guess this is saying like with crime or something mm-hmm. like that where you actually have or you know i mean if this is a universal fear i suppose yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. Any, anytime i mean that your home is your safe space so like yeah. the ultimate fear is someone coming in and violating and it violating yeah. it and you and everything mm-hmm. yeah and yeah the, i mean this movie's built on that premise at least for a good half it feels like of its running time is right. just violating the sanctity of the home mm-hmm. because the killer okay so <laughs> violating it which, hard. Well, yeah. but that's yeah. interesting though because in the 80s it was our version of that was like the house is haunted like that's our version of like our home being violated is like there's a presence here we can't remove that's what it's we did interest- in like the 2010s like yeah yeah the, the really mm-hmm. heavy the ghost in the house and we can't mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah that's how we like the only two ways through horror we know how to express that is either home invasions or hauntings. Interesting. Mm-hmm. There's something there. We can we yeah, can write a paper well, on I something mean, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is because, like, where do you go, like, to, you know, to, to feel safe? Mm-hmm. I mean, right. And that's yeah. why Wes Craven that's always... That's the only thing that we say to ourselves. I just want to go home. Like, right. every, yeah. home is, yeah. you know, I'm, obviously, it's the ultimate safe space. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think, you know, I was saying, Wes Craven uh, once said, he's like, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, how come there are so many scenes set in bathrooms in your movies? And he's like, well, that's where vulnerable. you feel the most vulnerable yeah. in your home. It's like right. so you've already within the walls and then, you know, in the bathroom. And, <laughs> right. You know. right. Well, and like that's that's the thesis of Dreamcatcher, that Stephen King story movie, is that like the terrors in the bathroom in those movies, because he was saying that like a lot of people find out they have cancer in the bathroom. And so like and so it's he become a scene with a shit weasel. Yeah. And he equated. Them. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> yep. Um, yep. <laughs> so yep. this uh, the killer, the guy who drives the uh, truck. This is a French actor, uh, Philippe um, Nahon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he was also in a Gaspar Noe movie called "I Stand Alone," which I didn't see because the Have world figured out who Gaspar Noe was with Irreversible. Yep, um, and they said I've seen enough. <laughs> and he's in that too. Yeah, he's one of the guys in the yeah. Which that like that is a good movie, but I don't ever need to see it again. So I get it. Yeah. I get it. Like. Yeah, that's a rough. And one. Vincent Cassel's in that. So it's yeah. like that, and he's excellent in that movie. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Yep. Ugh. Um, <laughs> Somebody, so. there's some movie company that keeps running commercials for their shit, and I keep seeing that scene from Possession. Yeah, because yeah, like, like sub- the, the like subway scene. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's wild. They just remastered, and they've re- it's on like a theatrical like it's tour some, right yeah. now. Yeah, it, oh, that's why it's 4K, on loop. On, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I've seen that commercial. I'm like, what the fuck is that doing on my TV? <laughs> 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 oh. but there, see, this you're is like, what, how do I block an ad? Yeah, this is what the Saturday Night Freak Show does for you. Now you see that, and you're like, I know what that is. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know too much. It's a trigger, is what that is. Um, 
So uh, he's dressed in overalls, which mm-hmm. I took as this is a nod toward Michael Myers. They're going for a look, right? They're definitely thinking they can establish like a slasher look with this guy. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, they're definitely yeah, giving him something that obviously stands out and is, well, I'll say unique to him. I mean, mm-hmm. like you just said, it, Michael Myers does the same thing, but mm-hmm. they are giving him a look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, except they're um, like Carhartt uh, colored, you know, yeah. tan. Right. He's got um, a hat. Yeah, little razor and, uh, blade, straight blade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, the guy is. Um, I mean, would you say nondescript? I don't know. They don't. They shoot him in uh, uh, the, the framing of him. I always yeah. thought it was kind of interesting. Where they never show his eyes. Yeah, for the longest yeah. time, they hide portions of his face. He's yeah. always wearing a hat, where mm-hmm. it's shot, where it's kind. It's right there at his eye level, where you're kind of not showing his eyes, or you're showing yeah. half his face. Or for a while at the beginning, they're just showing the bottom half of his face. So they keep him hidden a little bit mm-hmm. just to keep the mystery going, I think. Which is, I mean, effective. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I think as you're watching it, you're like, okay, this is just some guy. Motive, we don't know. He just shows up at the house and starts killing everybody. Mm-hmm. He kills the dad first by basically uh, dad answers the door. This is in the middle of the night. Uh, hits this is him. an interesting choice. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, uh, of uh, murder? Uh, yeah. uh, murder? In- yeah. This this is a thing with French extremist movies, too, is they, like, take their time in killing you, and, uh, like, they always pick, like, the least practical but most, like, theatrical way to do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, when I'm watching this in, again tonight. I haven't seen this in probably 16, 17 years, something like that. Um, I was piecing everything back together and trying to remember, like, I know the dad dies right here, but how does he do it? Does he kick him? Does he... Uh, then I'm like, oh... The, the fucking dresser, case. the bookcase or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, when I first saw this, because it had to have been when it first came out on video and everything, like that, that death bothered me. Like mm-hmm. watching it tonight, it's a, it seems a little, it's, um, I mean, it's extreme. They yeah. got that, but it oh, that one always bothered me. The physics of it are yeah. not there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not, but it always just like, woof, shit. Yeah. Well, he like, he, he uses his stuck in boot heel to kick the dad's head through the banisters of mm-hmm. the railing, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, the stair rail, and then is able to walk around and go get the bookcase to shove it and knock the guy's head off, and then it bleeds all mm-hmm. over the place. Uh, Giannetto Di Rossi mm-hmm. was the makeup effects guy on this. Um, which you know shows that uh, Aja and his collaborators obviously they're looking back. He he work- knows his stuff, right? Yeah. It's you know? like if I can't get Tom Savini, who's working today? Who knows practical right. makeup effects? And so they go get the guy who worked with all the Lucio Fulci, you know, did Zombie and mm. City of the Living Dead and all that stuff. Well, and he's done a couple freak show movies other than those two. He's done uh, Rambo three, Colin, yeah, yeah. and uh, Dune. The original Dune. He did yeah, the effects in that. Right. Yeah, so he's, yeah. he's been all over the So he's your show. guy, Colin. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. This is, we need to bring awareness to Giannetto De Rossi mm-hmm. as a, like, uh, there's Tom Savini and then, okay, that might be a little His too, effects but he's are still good, working though. today. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he is still like, uh, if you want gore splatter stuff uh, done well, right. he's one of the guys, like, the guy to go to, I guess. Um, so... So the dad dies, then the mom, right? The yeah, mom's next one. I guess, uh, you know, so Sean was saying that, um, you know, it bothered you when you saw this um, originally. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're talking about, like, this is the wave of French extremism coming in. Now we're, you know, what, 20 years on from this, right? So mm-hmm. um, is uh, when you're watching it tonight, um, is there, well, even Holly watching it for the first time, mm-hmm. It's like, does it seem like, because I think, you know, Michaela was pitching this as this a French extreme movie you're going to watch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, was it I- extreme as you thought it was going to be? Mm, it wasn't as, because when, when I say, fr- when I hear French extreme, I know how extreme that can be. Mm-hmm. And that's not typically my thing. So I was slightly concerned at how extreme it was going to be. Um, but this I think was tolerable because we've seen, well, go ahead. well I was yeah. going to say, because we've seen everything when yeah, I first, yeah, yeah. yeah, when I first saw this, this was extreme. Yeah. Uh, very extreme. I'm like, well, this is one of the first ones I saw when we got into that. I think that, like we said earlier, the torture porn era yeah. back I, in the day, this is one of the first ones I saw. So this is aside from seeing like 80s stuff, which is, you know, uh, obviously it's different. Like even it, this felt more realistic. It right. felt mm-hmm. more. Ugh, you, I, I could feel it more. It felt like people were yeah. being killed. I think. I think the thing about this movie compared to some other French extreme stuff is that the context is easier to digest. Like some of the context for other French extremism is like 
a lot of kid stuff, a lot of pregnant woman stuff, a lot of like situate like worst case scenario stuff. Yeah. Whereas like I mean, there is kid murder in this, which like points in for me, you know, in my column. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> kid murder. You follow through on it. Good job. But like in some of those other French extreme movies, it's like kids committing stuff or it's like, or it's more direct. Like I will say they are pretty merciful on the kid in this movie compared to everybody else. Like yeah. you don't see it. It's just a, sh- it's just a gunshot and we're done. Whereas yeah. like th- some other French extreme movies are not like right, that. Comparatively. So, yeah. 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 Get off easy. I think that's a good, ex- that's a good representation of how this is tolerable. Mm-hmm. The, the, the kid and the dog have a quick death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm okay true, with it. True. He was most merciful to the dog. I yeah. Think. Yeah. The dog went quick. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Yeah. Cause some of the later <laughs> ones, I mean, I guess the way that I've always, um, French movies as on a whole, I mean, their dramas and everything seem to be, you know, involved with like the messier side of like the human condition. Like yeah. they show people warts and all. Yep, kind of yeah. Thing, yep. Where we kind of idealize people. Yeah. They're just like, this is people, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, their horror movies feel like, um, like American filmmakers, it almost feels like they self-censor themselves. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like, well, th- we know this isn't even going to get past, so we're not even going to try it. We're not mm-hmm. even going to go after this subject or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the French right. are like, I, it's like either they come from another planet or something. <laughs> right. like, well, yeah. if I was going to do this subject, I do it like this. And so that's kind of what makes it refreshing right. when right. you watch it. You know, it's exciting because you're like, oh, this is. <laughs> you know? Right. Like if you listen to our like 2019 Pet Cemetery epi- episode, we even talk about that. We're like in the original, they were willing to kill a toddler. And then in the remake, they switched it. They aged up right. a kid. Yeah. And like, I feel like if the French were making Pet Cemetery, they'd be like, that's a baby now. <laughs> They'd be it's like, a baby. Nine, twelve babies are yeah. the road. We're yeah. going to run them over. Guess what? A whole truck of babies is going to explode. You know, like that's what they would do. Well, so. because Light the babies on fire. We need more fire. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I can't go five minutes without mentioning Wes Craven. Uh, so <laughs> Alex Aja actually had a story where you know on the hills have eyes. There's a scene involving a bird that's in the original yep. and uh, in the in the remake. And he was, you know, was going to do it. You know, he's like, it's in the remake. And Wes Craven oh, yeah. was basically telling him, like, you know, we can't do that scene. Right. Because, you know, somebody's going to copy it and then blah, blah, blah. And Aja was surprised that the guy who, like, was so, you know, uh, brutal with mm-hmm. Last House and Left and Hills Have Eyes was like now, you know, as an older guy going like, you know, we right. shouldn't be doing this in our movies anymore. And he was like. No, no, we have to, we have to go, we have to do. All Which you know, it's like you got to keep that in. That's why people remember the movie. And I think <laughs> the that's fucking wh- bird dies. I think that's why the Hills Have Eyes remake is so good because I remember when that movie came out, it being super controversial because there is a scene where they point a gun at a baby's face mm-hmm. and hold it there for a minute, and mm-hmm. it's like kind of like a hostage situation. Yeah. But like, I remember people just being freaked out at the idea that like there was a gun, real prop, whatever, mm-hmm. like anywhere near a baby in a movie, like yeah. and. Yeah, and that I mean, look, he followed through on the extremist part of it. He was like, "No, in France, we would shoot that baby yeah, in the face." So, baby, yeah. you know? <laughs> well, the uh, the next person in uh, succession here is the killer goes up the stairs and yeah. targets the mom. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is probably some of the better effects in the movie, if not the best. This scene I thought was really gross because he slashes her throat, but then like cuts it. Almost until she's decapitated. Yeah, and this is under like fluorescent light too, so it's really it's gross. really bright. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is, but no, she's still it's alive. Because it, yeah, because it reminds me of um, uh, what is it? Uh, Red Dragon. Yeah. When, when he's investigating the house at mm-hmm. night and he mm-hmm. flips on the lights and there's just that dark blood stain everywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was kid murder in that too. So it also reminds me of that. But yeah, just under like you said, the the just stark lighting right on her it's good effects yeah, there's no mm-hmm. way to hide the seams basically no. right. like you're saying you're looking right at it um and she's still alive even though she's almost decapitated well she does like, that like she she tries to get air but the uh the wound in her throat yeah. opens yeah you know, it's, one of those, it's and gross then the blood starts pouring out of it mm-hmm. and yeah i mean it is like you know, I mean, it's hard to watch. It's, yeah, uh, you yeah. Know, I, mean, I guess it's extreme. What about. Would you say yeah. it's extreme? It's extreme. <laughs> it's this era uh, focused on the uh, you know less fantasy horror and all this other stuff. Or you know, they went for the pain and suffering mm-hmm. and brutality. I guess was the mm-hmm. the that's how they're going to scare you because yeah. it's not like jump scares. It's no. just the intensity. There was one jump scare. There was one the mirror. Mo- in the bathroom? No. There was one. There was one. Yeah, there was one. Oh, I'm trying to remember what it was. There was a moment that, like, I literally, I jumped. Yeah, I saw you. Yeah. 
Well, there was there was one where I think Alex is in the bathroom and shuts the medicine cabinet and Marie's behind her before anything mm. starts. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I don't remember what it was. There was a moment that made me jump, but I don't remember what it was. He also cut off the mom's hands. I was going to say, the one, Why? one thing that... Who knows? I don't know, but it was just the reveal of it when she kind of pokes her. The yeah. hand comes into frame and pokes and the, her. Like, and like, ah. the like, wobbliness of the stump was Is really re- gross. It feels like that was missing from the American version. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. Um, One thing that makes this movie really effective is the Foley work. There's a lot yep. of good there's sound a lot of, in this movie. There's a lot, there's a lot of lot good of sound in this. A lot crunchy, of crunchy, a lot yes. of drippy. I'm squishy. always the squishy. Yeah. There is a good cutting noise, mm-hmm. which is I always compare it to um, the opening of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm-hmm. which that sound is disgusting, and mm-hmm. just the cutting of meat and flesh and mm-hmm. stuff. Ooh, it's good in this movie too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It just uh, que- it makes you queasy. Yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, so what's happened is uh, uh, Alex. Um, by being a guest in the house is able to Marie. Oh, sorry, Marie. Marie, yeah. Marie being a guest in the house, um, gathers up all of her stuff, has this kind of forethought to gather up all of her stuff and hide it. So when the killer is methodically searching every room, he doesn't know that she's there. This also, so yeah, he's seen Torso, an mm-hmm. Italian uh, Giallo movie. Um, cause even the, the slatted, uh, uh, blinds, I'm like, that's Halloween. Yep. I mean, there's moments where you're kind of yeah. seeing his influences to other, mm-hmm. which uh, I love movies. speaking of slats, the shot of the mom, when she's going down eyeballs, slat by slat. Yeah. Oh. That's a great shot. That, how yeah. how many times did you have to do that? Like, I don't know, but it's perfect. It's and her effective. eyes are the mm-hmm. makeup on her eyes and everything. It's perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. but this is, these are good moments. I mean, if you're going to do these kind of homages, this is the way to do it because you're not right. You're not taking shots from the other movie. You're not remaking a scene from a movie. Yeah. yeah but it's, it's like, like an essence. You're just like, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I right? feel what that is. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how, you know, he really knows his stuff, yeah. right? Because if it was made by someone that didn't actually know those movies and just was like, that's a scene from that movie. Right. right you know, yeah. then they would be more heavy handed with it. Yeah. You would just, yeah. More of a lift. And this mm-hmm. is like, I can feel that it's there, but you're not pointing directly at it. Right. Well, maybe in the shining murder, that was pretty close. But, mm-hmm. uh, so, <laughs> um, so, Marie is able to hide, right? This mm-hmm. is her whole thing. She's hiding and creeping around. So this is like most this hundred year old farmhouse. She's a hide and seek very, champ. Yeah, yeah. yeah, very quietly. <laughs> As he stalks from room to room and eventually runs out and goes and shotguns the kid out in the field. We don't see this, you know. We see the aftermath uh, of it. Which, like, if you're familiar with French extremism, it's weird that they dial it back here because, mm-hmm. well, I mean, like, just knowing the kid stuff the, I've seen in other the movies, French I'm love like, killing yeah. Children. That's why I was like, maybe he was aware that there was going to be an export on this, but it does seem it's sometimes like very French, you know, like right. it's it's insular French in mm-hmm. some ways, you know, um, that it feels like wouldn't translate outside of. But I guess just the inherent idea of, you know, it's a you know, there's a killer and he won't stop and he keeps on coming and coming and coming. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, um, uh, Marie is tied up because I guess what Alex is tied up. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. Marie it's is the hair. She looks like an Alex. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. But she's, she's the Marie. Mm-hmm. So Alex, Alex is tied up, is tied up mm-hmm. because the killer, we kind of get this idea that the killer has a sexual obsession with her. How he has discovered her, we don't know. That's like not explained. Mm-hmm. Just he shows up at the door one night, and he's going to take her out mm-hmm. and throw her in the back of his van and drive her off into the woods somewhere where we assume she's going to end up a decapitated head, uh, you know. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, but Marie is yes. able to squirrel her way into the back of the van, mm-hmm. yep. right? Uh, and then goes along for the ride. So the interaction between these two in the back of the van, mm-hmm. right? Uh, yeah, I was watching it the whole time. This was like the first time I watched this. This was the first sense that like something's not making sense. Uh-huh. This is the first like tingle of like, why is she reacting that way? Because Alex is not doing the things that you would expect a person to do if they, you know, if they wanted to get out. Like right. your friend shows up and is like, I can, you know, she can't get the, the, the padlocks off or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, but... She's not reacting right. No. 
you know. Which, like, I guess you could kind of say in a lot of horror movies, people don't act the way they should in certain situations, right. but mm-hmm. it's extreme. Yeah. It's extreme. She, <laughs> she uh, seems to, I mean, I, I didn't actually see her, like, pulling away. No, they do not cross. I was, that's what I was watching for, too. Not until the third act then right, she starts yeah. right away. but no in this scene they are together because this is like one of the first times they're together that long after everything's going on so yes i'm watching it as well going like is there any part where they fully go for it like you said she doesn't recoil from her at any point mm-hmm. but they go i think right up to that line mm-hmm. just screaming before. and yeah yeah there's a, and- there is a moment where she like separates herself from her and like curls up into and, the fetal yeah, position yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, uh, but she has just been through a lot, so yeah, her whole family just got murdered in front of her, yeah. and like in a brutal way. Like her dad got decapitated by a bookcase, like yeah, and she's been kidnapped. Yep, and yeah. they end up, uh, they have to go to a gas station. This is also, I think, um, right up till here, we're still following the plot of the Dean Coons <laughs> book. I think yeah. like, this yeah. also happened. Yeah, the kidnapping and going to the gas station. Mm-hmm. Um, where we meet, uh, or so, she, so, so, um, Marie is able to get out of the van and get into the gas station. And then we're going to play like cat and mouse for a little while, right? Mm-hmm. Like, is the killer going to see that she's hiding behind the, the, uh, racks of stuff? Right. Is Jimmy, the guy who, you know, the proprietor, going to be able to help her? Is he going to be able to get help? Is the killer going to get, you know, aware that Jimmy knows that? she's here and is trying to help her and so there's a little bit of cat and mouse right we're trying to figure out who knows what right right mm-hmm. until shock we got the the scatman crawler's death from the shining as a pickaxe gets buried in uh, old jimmy in front of the liquor cabinet where he ordered j and b whiskey yeah right? he did. Jay and B. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, which like, okay oh, Colin, huh? listeners if you've ever been to a gas station petrol station whatever in, yes. in france please tell let us know if they have axes and saws just hanging on shelves in there because that's what this one has for sale. There was yeah. like a whole like section of hardware weapons. Yeah. So yeah. Well, we think of convenience stores, you're going to pick up some chewing gum over in France. You well, pick I up th- uh, I think uh, in the country, though. I was going to say, I think <laughs> that there's nothing around. I mean, if you look at the classic Tremors, there was a whole barrel full of axes and pickaxes and rakes and stuff. But that the they got. alcohol is in a locked cabinet. But the, but the axes, axes and saws are just on a regular shelf. You can get in Priorities. trouble with alcohol. I've yeah. done plenty Priorities. of safe things with axes. <laughs> <laughs> and like, the, it's like a big fire axe. It's like yeah. a two-handed yeah, axe. It it's is. not a little like one-handed one. But looking back on the scene, I I have more questions. Okay, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to barrel <laughs> what are your through. Questions? Yeah. All right. Well, let's barrel through the re- end of the movie. Yeah. Then I mean, there's not that much back. more after okay. this. There's really not. There's not yeah. much by way of plot. I guess. No. Is that what it's a we're thin saying? plot stretched yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we do a few, we do repeat a few things. Yeah. Yeah. There's a greenhouse chase. There is a greenhouse. Well, there's chase. there's a whole a um, car chase. There's a which, car chase. <laughs> which let's let's remember like, this. There's, there's a car chase. I was like, remember more, that. I was like, I have more questions. Yep. <laughs> yep. Is it? Well, yeah. Yep. We'll, we'll come back to it. There's a chase through the the bathroom at the gas station. Then the water closet. We, yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, the killer leaves with um, Alex in the back of the car. So Marie is now fucked. She's like, ah, right, he's getting away. But she has access to a phone. So she can call the cops. And so she calls the cops to yell like, at them. I'm yeah. at a gas station. They're like, which one? She's like, I don't know. You should fucking get here. <laughs> yep. And then she hangs up on him. Yeah. Um, Takes the attendance car, I assume. The gas station attendance car. car? Yeah. yeah. He's got a Ford. I'm not sure what. It's some sort of muscle car, yeah, like vintage muscle car. Tear his ass down the dark road after because it looks cool. Yeah. yeah, and it goes, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, yep. it's all it's very loud and bright colored. Has he the brightest dashboard of all yeah. time too. <laughs> yep, and then but of course the killer leads her into the woods, the deep dark woods, right? Mm. Some to a secret greenhouse yard. Here. Yep, and then there's that whole thing where like she's following by turning off her headlights, and like yep. where did he go? And then bam! All of a sudden he's behind her, and he's. I was getting some dual with... vibes in yep. this. Yeah. <laughs> some dual. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, there's a massive car crash where she lands on the roof. Should be dead. Should have had spinal cord injuries, but yep. nope, she's fine. She's got exterior bleeding trauma. Mm-hmm. And wanders off into the greenhouse, mm-hmm. you know what you have in the middle of the woods in France. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And in the greenhouse. 
We keep making jokes about it. It's not unusual. There's lots of farms <laughs> that have greenhouses throughout right. their property. Well, yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. this just seemed like it was very back roads with nothing else around it. That it was just like, dark. Oh, it, there was like, woods. We don't know what property they were on. Yeah, I mean, she drove off nothing and landed in some greenhouses or, you know, hobo <laughs> houses, what I call them. Yeah. <laughs> and there, the killer, of course, is one step ahead of her. Always one step ahead of her because there's even a scene where she steals a gun. She gets the car and the gun from the yeah. gas station. Yeah. She's like, yeah, now I got a gun. I'm going to fucking go get this guy. And so she chases him. And when he, when his car is behind her, she looks at the rearview mirror and she's shocked to see that he's got his hand out the window and he has all the bullets. So that means that he went and went behind the counter and took all the bullets out of Jimmy's hey, but gun. But left the gun to give her false he hope. that she was there, even though she was doing everything. Okay. Yeah. And then... This is all leading toward like yeah, our, our double back questions. Yep. And then I should be writing these down. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say, well, you remember all these. So there's this climax is in the greenhouse where she is able to. Uh, well, it looks like uh, actually that's where it gets kind of gross because at some point he's sticking his fingers down. That was well, disgusting. Okay, that was, he does. Yeah. He does the Black Christmas bag. Yep. Kill. He tries to do it on her. Yeah. And then he starts, yes, yeah, sticking Shoves his, his fingers dirty, down her throat. Dirty, gross fingers yeah. down her throat. And that was disgusting. Yeah. That went on too long. I hope yeah. they that get was, yeah. out of that for the American. That was version. extreme. That was extreme. <laughs> sure. See, that's that kind yeah. of shit that only yeah. the French would, would even <laughs> yeah. try to get away yeah. with. I, I'm saying American uh, directors wouldn't even do no, it. No, not but at all. Wouldn't occur to us. <laughs> but with that said, more questions. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, she uh, gets a barbed wire. This is a poster image for the American poster. Yep. Um, she takes like a post from the greenhouse that because there's like for some reason there's barbed wire inside a greenhouse. Don't know why. And takes the barbed wire and wraps around like the post. Yeah. And mm -hmm. fucking lets him have it with it. Mm. It goes on for a very long time. Till his face is jelly. But mm -hmm. he's still alive and tries to strangle her. And mm -hmm. then he suffocates, she suffocates him. And then we're like, woohoo, that's over. Mm -hmm. Then she goes to release her friend Alex from the back of the truck. And it's like morning now. So it's extra upsetting because it's daytime. Mm -hmm. That's always weird when you see stuff like this in the daytime. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, But here the film cuts away. Yes. And it cuts away to the gas station where, yes, the police have finally arrived after investigating all of yep. the potential gas stations to try and find which one she was fucking talking about. If she even called in the first place, because what do right. we find out when the detectives go in and they find Jimmy's dead body there mm -hmm. and they watch the security video? And what do they see? It was Marie. <gasps> Axing that dun. guy in the chest. There is no crazy trucker man. No. Nope. What? Yep. It's Marie. All right. And then all of a sudden the reality of the movie completely collapses. Because yep. now what does this mean? Now if we're going I back, nearly turned this movie <laughs> off the first time I watched this and I saw this. I said, are you fucking kidding me? All right. Now when we double back, let's reveal that Colin has been Travis this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> and dun, he's going to take us back through it all. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, was in the when we first see the killer, I mean, it's an unmotivated shot of him out in the middle of nowhere, sitting mm -hmm. in his car, getting head from a severed head. From a head. Right. Yeah. Where I, does that take I place? I don't think that happened at all. That didn't happen. I think that's in someone's mind. So yeah. she was dreaming about that as she was driving with her friend? I think she house? is an unreliable narrator and we can't trust anything that comes from that character's perspective in this entire movie. But that doesn't come from her perspective. That's the, the where, I think that's where this movie is violating some yes, kind of... Yes, right. Agreed. Yeah. Um, because then... It's breaking a contract with the audience, right? I think it's just... I think it's showing... Without differentiating or telling you when it's in it or not, I think it's showing that part of her, of her psyche. Let me ask you Without this, telling Sean. us that we're going in and out. How did Marie get to the farmhouse? How did Marie get to the farmhouse? Alex she rode up with Alex. They exactly. rode together in the car. Exactly. So where the fuck does this truck come from? It, do it doesn't. <laughs> okay, well, so there is no truck? Yeah. But, he, but, the, but there is at the end of the movie. There is because she's her friend is kidnapped by yeah. somebody and taken yep. in this truck. That does but happen. That's the thing. Her friend is kidnapped by her. Right, I know. But yeah, but, but truck. the truck, where does the truck come from? Yeah. Yeah. She does a car chase with the truck. And another there car. There is no chase. It is no, all in her head. That's, no all in that's all in her head. That's all in her head because that's, she's in the other car. So yep. it's still be in the other car. Yep. So that's all in her head. That's I, all in that's her head. Okay, okay, okay. So in the convenience of the gas station, whatever you want to call it, 
when Jimmy is going to get the alcohol and he right. looks over at her hiding behind the rack mm-hmm. of the chips or whatever, mm-hmm. and he kind of like nods and winks at her subtly, like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get us out of this." What is any, what what, what is happening happened. there? So I think she went in. I, yeah, the, I don't think that any of that happened. Yeah, I think I think that scene was about a minute compared to the five in the movie. So, you know okay. I, mean? I think she just asked him. She asked, yeah. she asked him. Yeah. For okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. okay. So she was talking to Jimmy. Maybe. Yeah. Yep. I don't know because we're never going to see an objective. perspective. No. Th- this whole movie is told from the perspective of an unreliable narrator. So unfortunately it's on us, the audience to pick through it and decide okay. what actually wait, happened and wait. what didn't. They have a conversation like Jimmy knows the trucker. Yeah. I think that none of that happened. Okay, so she's yeah. just... I think this, just none of it happened. Her I think like 70% okay. of this movie didn't happen. Right, because This somehow, is just her like psychosis where yes. she, is, she thinks she's this other person and she's imagining this is happening. I, I think that noticed. other person is like the manifestation of the worst parts of her. Right. All in her I, head. I never though. noticed yeah. if he yeah. had a name tag or anything on. I didn't notice. No. I was it was only on the back had, of like, his... I've seen it and yeah. it was like, oh... Well, I was looking Jimmy. because... So the back of his jacket has like something printed on it for right. whatever... And it's on the side of his truck too. The back of her shirt also had words on it. Yes. And I was trying to look and I could never get a clear shot at it during oh, this movie yeah. to see if, if there was some sort of match there. Yeah. Look at. Yeah. So, this is all, so, you know, because there's also a lot of talk about like this killer has killed other girls when they're in the truck. There's there's subject or objective shots of Marie. Uh, no, sorry, Alex looking up and seeing bloody uh, scratches and all that. Right. Like, this guy has killed other girls and right. all this other stuff. Right. We're saying none of that happened. Right. I mean, it, it had to have happened to some extent because the truck is co- is confirmed to be a real thing. The two cars that end up at the end of the movie are not the it's not Alex's car that right. they arrived in. So right. like where in the how in the fuck did this happen? Right. Like this. None of it holds any kind of no. water whatsoever. Right. No. That's <laughs> exactly why I need to bring it to here tonight. <laughs> right. I need to work through these issues. These are things I've been thinking about for like 10 years, Colin. Because like, I'm trying to think if there were other objective um, moments in the movie, obviously meeting the family at the beginning when the kids Mm -hmm. playing and, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, that's um, neither Alex nor Marie are there during that um, Mm -hmm. scene. Because you're saying it's a a unreliable narrator, which would mean that Marie has to be present in every scene of the movie, um, you know, to basically like, yeah. we're only seeing her version of it, which I guess for the rest of the movie we are right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because we're saying it's either her or her psychotic, uh, you know, alter ego is who we experience the scene Correct. through. Um, he's yeah. Some manifestation of her, like, uh, lust for her friend mm. that because she can't have her, like she's gonna, you know, I'm going to kill everybody else. Um, surefire way to win him over you know yeah just kill everyone else so they can have to love you well because at the end i mean that's basically where she's going she's you know saying repeatedly like so you don't love me you don't mm-hmm. love me and mm-hmm. marie is because uh once once uh you know once the police see this objective view that mm-hmm. it was marie that was the killer yep we which we back. have to see through a security camera right because that's not her perspective right and then we cut mm-hmm. back to what's actually going on with the girls, and uh, that's when Alex is like, "Get away from me! You killed my, all my my entire family!" And then she stabs uh, Marie with mm-hmm. a knife. So now there's blood loss happening, maybe, mm-hmm. and that's altering her perspective. But then we are like literally cutting between the killer and Marie in mm-hmm. shots when they she, run through the forest of the saw with the saw, the French chainsaw, which, which is like like a table saw. Where did that come from? It was in the truck. truck. Where did the truck come from? Right. Uh, <laughs> and, this all shows premeditation for Marie. Like, if you're in court, right? This shows premeditation for Marie, right? If she has a truck with the saw in it, then like well, she planned she's ahead. Been going around. Maybe picking the truck up was just on the farm. Them. Yeah, that's true. Had, so has Marie been just like killing girls across the French countryside? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Uh, you know, like it just doesn't. No, hold. that doesn't. Because there's no sense. motivation for her to do that. Right. Maybe the truck was on the at the farm. Because it mm-hmm. seems like Alex is the object of her affection. Exactly. Not like unless we're supposed unless to say she's done this before. She's yeah. done it before. And she has like her truck that's parked not too far away. That she whatever. There's a lot yeah. of planning in that. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're definitely uh, getting the electric chair for this amount of premeditation. It doesn't seem like, because the whole thing is trying to say that she's a psycho, right? Mm-hmm. She is a psycho, stone cold, like mm-hmm. disturbed young woman. Um, so, 
yeah, she is forcing Marie to like, you know, tell me that you love me. Mm -hmm. And then once, uh, or sorry, Marie's saying that to Alex. And once Marie or Alex is like, yes, I do. That's when she like fucking puts a, uh, a car jack a crowbar. Or a crowbar right through her. Which that's a pretty dull object. It could be pretty strong to shove a crowbar through somebody, right? Mm-hmm. Especially at close yeah. range like that. Yeah, especially after everything she's been through. That's right. Oh, that's right. Because she also got splattered in the face with like uh, an entire with, with like with thirty dude. gallons. Of <laughs> she, her mouth, so the inside blood. of her mouth, was covered with blood. I felt so bad for that Imagine actress. That I was smell. like, "That's awful." Boy, that she was probably choking on it. Deliberately crazy, over the top, to the point where they actually did. Saw that blood from that dude in the front seat of that car right into the camera lens. Yeah. The yeah. Camera lens mm-hmm. Dripping with, with yeah. blood. She's getting splattered with, I mean, mm-hmm. it's like evil dead levels of, yeah. of yeah. gore in the back seat. There's a lot of blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But once, uh, once she's, uh, poked her, you know, through the chest with the, um, crowbar, then, you know, we hear the, you know, we'll never be separated again. We'll never be separated again. And I actually thought like that probably like, I remember the beginning of the movie. That'd probably be a good place to get out. And yeah. Just, and go to, to black. But yep. it doesn't because we got to keep going. And so we go to the mental institution where she's being helped now. And uh, Alex is visiting her. Why you do this? Uh, <laughs> behind a pane of glass. She can't see us, right? But they might somehow, both be in a hospital and she's just in the secure way. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I gotcha. And, uh, but Marie senses that she's there. She can't and, see me, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And does a shock reach out for yep. the camera, which is like, woo. Okay, so would it surprise <laughs> you to know that uh, when they Ooh. went to producer Luke Besson for the financing... It's his fault. <laughs> what? I, he, I don't know this oh, information. He suggested the twist ending. Cause I well, think, he suggested moving it, I think. Because they were... Or it was going to be like that part where they watched the video camera footage wasn't going to be where it was. I think they moved it to the very end. Of the, it was at the very end of the film, and he said, move it up in the last reel. Oh, so, so the, oh, the way earlier. I heard it was... Oh, that. see, I would have loved it if it just ended with that shot of her like on the gas station footage, and then, boom, we cut. I'd be like, that's enough. You get it I from mean, there, considering right? considering what else happens in the movie, yeah, that's... Yeah, that's, that's it. Oh, God, that would be a better, better way to end I it. I thought it would have be been better. Yeah. Oh, so What'd you hear? Maybe I heard it wrong. I, you hear? I heard that it was his idea to have a twist in oh. the movie, but I, then I can't imagine... You know, the only other thing that you think is that, well, then it was just like a straight ahead, you know, survival horror right. movie. Right. Mm. And it would end with, uh, I don't know, the, you know, Marie killing the dude. Which the that killer. is what a lot of French extremist movies are, is like, a, like I said, a home invasion and them hopefully killing the guy and then it ends or they don't. And then it ends. That's yeah. how, actually like, a lot of them end with it not happening. I, I feel like this particular one that would have mm-hmm. been boring. Yeah, well, that's I think the, yeah. that's what Luke Passan was thinking. He's yeah. like, you need to punch this up, and like, what if she actually is the killer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then even Alex though the goes like, but how? And Luke Passan says, don't, don't worry, worry about, about it. it. Yeah, he said, don't, don't worry about it. it. It's French. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll translate fine. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I guess. Uh, I mean, anything else before we... I mean, Roger Ebert said in his review, this movie is good up until the point you hit a plot hole so big you can drive a truck through it. And this movie literally does. Like, that was his <laughs> review. And I was like, yeah, that that's, that's it. That, that is the review of this movie. Yeah, like, that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to go around the table and tell you whether or not we recommend... Attention. <laughs> uh, but first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. No sugar cubes this week. Do you think there's a French version of Igor out there somewhere? We. Oui. <laughs> I'm sure part of him was made out of a French person. I think so, yeah. All right, well, we want to let you know how you can participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, High Tension, the Film Effect podcast writes in and says, I saw this in the theater with a friend who isn't a fan of gore. <laughs> and needless to <laughs> say, we don't talk anymore. <laughs> uh, oh, no. 
Oh, I'm sorry for your lost friendship. Oh, but, but in all honestly, all in all honesty, I think this film works. Yeah, the ending is cliche, but overall, I really do think highly of this one. I'm looking forward to hearing you all discuss it. Uh, the Bad Movie Cult Podcast says, I love this film for its brutality, but how was she in the back of the van while he was driving it? Yeah. She was that, never in the back of the van. Yeah, the first time yeah. I saw this movie, that was the part that really bothered me. There are certain parts where it feels like she's not, uh, Alex is not acknowledging that Marie's in the back of the truck. It feels like she's just reacting to being in the yeah. back of the yeah. truck. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. She's just not there. Uh, Maya Madsen says the first half is a straight uncredited ripoff of Dean Koontz's intensity. That kind of ruins it for me. Mm. Understandable. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says this movie delivers. If you can accept everything leading up to the twist reveal, this probably is in my top three French extreme next to Martyrs and Inside. And those are both. Martyrs is something else, man. Mart yeah. Martyrs is rough. Also. Yeah. I haven't mm -hmm. seen the whole thing, but I've seen it. <laughs> and then they remade it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was the remade same Inside people. also, did they, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't the same people remake Martyrs? No. No. Who made, no. Who did it's American. all American actors yeah. and everything. Oh. Mm -hmm. Inside was remade also. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. uh, Grant Parrish says, I like this. The opening scene with the head definitely gives a tone of, well, that was fucked. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that sets it <laughs> yeah. up. They threw you in the deep end right away. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh. Jimbo Ice says, I remember watching this with a house full of friends, and boy, did this get our attention. It doesn't hold up great, but this was my entry into extreme French horror, and it will always have a place in my memory for that reason alone. Adam Kaler says, High tension was fine, but unfortunately they didn't land the ending. Very gritty with some tense visuals, but banks on an unreliable narrator. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, High tension? You mean like going to your in-laws for Christmas after having an edible? <laughs> <laughs> Thank I you. I wish that's what this that movie sounds, was about. Yeah, I'd watch better. that movie. <laughs> it's a better says, way to go to your in Thank you. I'll be here all week. Try the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, we watched a movie called The Skeleton Key. Peter Gatt Indeed. says you brought up the slap on the latest <laughs> podcast. As we always do. It's, it's going to keep coming up. Don't worry. We're going to watch it at some point. This is a TV show. Yeah, you got to yeah, listen to our we'll Skeleton Key episode. Yeah. Uh, but he says it's actually based on a best-selling book by an Aussie author who I'm an acquaintance of, and it's also oh. made into an Aussie miniseries. That's so true. There. You know the oh, creator of the, that. You know the creator of the slap? Of the slap? Of the oh Australian God. slap. But the book <laughs> the book. And, the oh, book. The book. He said the book. Based on. All right. I got to so read the slap book, we apparently. Gotta, uh, we're going to have to have a night here. The Slap Book Club. Thing. It's the Slap. <laughs> the Slap. The slap. Slapathon. Yeah. Uh, first the Australian, then the American. Yeah. And then we'll do a book club and read the Slap Book. We have to. Mm -hmm. We then have we'll just slap to. slap each other. Ah. Furiously <laughs> Googling. What is the Slap? Uh, Richard Kratzer says, I don't know how you voodoo that you do so well. It's a spell. Hell, it makes me want to shoop, shoop, shoop. I don't think that's how it goes. Is that uh, <laughs> Frank Sinatra? It's like you do it's something. It's a song. I, yeah. I, that, well, that's that's Shoop. Yeah, that, oh, he's, Shoop. He's, that's Shoop. That's Shoop. He's quoting Shoop. Shoop. Oh, okay, Salt okay. and Pepper, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Steve Carney says the skeleton key is one of my favorites that not a lot of people seem to talk about. It shares a lot of similarities with Get Out in terms of plot and structure. Mm -hmm. Peter Sarsgaard is great in everything I've seen him in, and I kind of wish he were in this movie more. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, he's I'm just good. glad I, I didn't have to. I'm glad I knew about this movie. I didn't have to two weeks in a row, try and figure out what the fuck was going on. <laughs> so, so, so I'm glad I knew what was, mostly what was happening in this movie. Well, about the previous week's episode, which was Shocker, uh, Jonathan Holt says, I never saw this one, but I remember seeing the VHS box art and Blockbuster so many times in the 90s, I had to look up the fight between, through the TV scenes mm. and however, chef's kiss. Uh, <laughs> also, do you guys remember Mitch Pelleggi as the host of Breaking the Magician's Code Magic's biggest secret. He was the host. What on Fox? I, did, I love. Those I did shows. watch that show. Yeah, okay. those okay. were great. Not only in the '90s were we obsessed with making magic like a mainstream event, but like we were obsessed with exposing it too. Like, <laughs> magic for, is so yeah, big. Yeah, yeah. It was the so masked good. magician. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember the last one that he unmasked himself. Yeah, <laughs> who was it? I don't remember. There was a ton of David Copperfield specials oh, in the nineties oh, too, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. and then there'd be like, "How did he do it?" And they would break down like you know the yeah. smaller stuff. Then but they ruined it all by yeah. telling you how they did. Yeah. Well, they did. Mm -hmm. Still fun. And magic ceased to exist. Mm -hmm. uh, Joey Blythe says, "If you want to keep up on the streak of cat murder movies, no, try May." 
from 2002. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. That's actually been on my list for a while, but yeah. I figure like nobody remembers it. Uh, Carson Snar Angela says, Bettis. I never knew much about this movie, but it's weirder than I could have imagined. What movie were we talking about? Uh, Shocker. Shocker. Uh, yeah. yes. And B. Shaw Foolery says, I'll have to watch Shocker because after listening to your episode, reviewing it, I was stuck with the idea of giant foam lips being made to <laughs> orally it, gyrate baby. in front of Horace Pinker. Mm-hmm. Well, they yeah. weren't foam, but you know. It was like TV static as giant yeah. lips, yeah. but yeah. they came out of the screen like yeah. CG. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was very weird. It was yeah. really weird. Indeed. All right. Mm-hmm. So thank you again, each of you, for uh, writing in. We greatly appreciate it. Indeed. Uh, now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight. Holly! You know, first tonight, what'd you think? How Since it know? was your first time. My first oh, viewing attention. of this. Um, uh, yeah, I was on the fence about this one. Uh, going into it, I didn't know anything about it other than it was a French extremist movie. Um, I... Uh, I, f- I don't want to say I figured out the twist early on, but I suspected it pretty early on. because I was like, there's something off here. And mm-hmm. so I, I knew there was going to be something. And then it, so many holes, just so many questions unanswered. That's really irritating to me, mm-hmm. but also kind of fun. I don't know. I, it's just stupid fun, but I kind of liked it. I was kind of bored by it in a few places. Um the gore was pretty extreme. The effects were pretty fantastic. Um, we talked about the highlight was probably the mom's death mm-hmm. was it was pretty intense. Um, and it was just so well done. It was very effective. And a lot of this movie is very effective. So I will give it that. Uh, I'm on the phone. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I will say, like, I, I, I'm sorry to infect you with this disease that like now years from now, you're just going to be like, but that didn't make sense. But that didn't yeah. make, like it's gonna yeah. it's gonna affect Waking you for up a in while. Your sleep. Where did the drug yeah. come from? And yeah. it's like I hate it, but I also like it. Yeah, you I know? understand. So That's I'm why just, I had to bring it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna recommend it. I'm gonna say you should check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think as far as I think it's a good entry to French extremist movies because um, some of them are just too much for me. That's not typically my thing. I've never been into torture porn. That's not usually, but I do like the psychological stuff. And the French do tap into that more than an American film does. And I appreciate that. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and recommend this. I think it's an interesting one to check out. Uh, I think it'll, it'll entertain you in some aspect. I guarantee it. Colin, what did you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about it with the benefit of hindsight and, uh, you know, three of us here, have, uh, we're going through it at least the second time, you know, mm-hmm. um, and so, obviously, that colors your perception of the movie. But the first time that you watch it, I think it's like, you know, is this ef- is this effective in what it's doing? And it is like it's a brutal, uh, you know, uh, just I mean, it's a horror movie. You know, yeah. I mean, oh for sure, <laughs> this is one of those uh, you know, go for broke kind of hardcore horror movies. The French uh, were partially responsible, I think, for you know bringing uh, that uh, back because then I think you know. American filmmakers kind of because when you look at like Hostel, that was 05, mm. right? Um, obviously, there was the influence of the French, uh, you know, extreme and, and yeah, you the know, Japanese Eli. extreme, you know, I mean, yeah. Takashi Miike, there was just something in the water, right? right? Mm-hmm. Where we were getting very extreme, uh, just, you know, pain and suffering in our horror movies and we're gonna uh, linger on it yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah but that's kind of like i guess uh you know like i said it's a throwback i mean this was it, not so much well i guess yeah it's a combination of the 70s um intensity and rawness and brutality with like 80s gore effects mm. you know where they had you know it's like so it is kind of the throwbacks but they still at some in some way a lot of ways feel contemporary um so yeah, I mean, uh, I would actually, I would definitely recommend the movie. It's just at one at some point it fucking collapses. It collapses under yeah. the weight of its own logic, yeah. and yep. then it doesn't make any sense. But I mean, and it doesn't make any sense. That's right. the fucking problem. It's not playing fair. That's yeah. why I have a problem with it. It's like you didn't leave clues that you know a right. film watcher can you know go back and go like ah, it's like what. Like that doesn't make any sense. How was this there? How this? It, 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 you know, whatever. Um, but what it does up until that point, I think, is so well executed that it it does work as a you know uh, 
a good horror movie. So yeah, I'm going to say I recommend it. Sean, what do you think? I think it's definitely a good horror movie. Um, I, I guess uh, you have to decide how much you're willing to forgive. I mean, that's really how much you're going to enjoy this movie. Um, but I mean, like everybody said, it's got. I, I think it's got plot holes so big. You're just like, okay, well, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. it, it's so big. You have to just, let it go. You, 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 you almost. You'll get the things like again. I think you'll probably wake up in the night and be like, "Where the fucking truck come from?" It'll be understand. haunting you that's, for a while. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, right. I was on the fence because it's like part of me is like, "Oh, I fucking hate it," and the other part of me is like, "I'm gonna go for the ride." You yeah, know? yeah. Just gonna go with so, it. But I'm not gonna be. But yeah, I'm, I. That may bother you, but I'm also just like, it's so huge. I, I'm not gonna sit here and try and nitpick it because I, I think we know there's really no concrete, solid answer to it. Like, I don't. Has anyone ever come out and as Aja come out? And not like, that I've heard. Yeah. I mean, probably for the best. I mean, this is a movie that will, if nothing else, if at its lowest, it'll get you thinking, I think, like paying attention, at least after the movie's over, talking about it, thinking about it. Um, but its journey, I think, is uh, pretty great. I mean, you know, effects, great. Um, it is, they are really like wallowing in that, uh, your, the torture, the despair of the characters. Um, it's there's some good stuff. Like I said, it had an impact on me when I first saw it. Um there's still some really just good shit in this movie that, yeah, I, I think you should still watch it again. Just accept huge plot hole in it, plot holes, whatever. Uh, yeah, and I think this one you do just go for the ride because there's a lot to, um, there's a lot in there for you. I think so. I'm gonna mm -hmm. recommend it. Mm -hmm. I think it's good. Um, it's it was entertaining to see it again. I will watch it again. So yeah, yes, on high tension. Uh, Michaela, I yeah, I like French extremity movies. Uh, they don't usually have a ton of rewatch value. Mm. Um, and this one, like, I don't know if it's better or worse on a second watch, you know, cause like you're, you're looking for those clues, Kyle. And like you said, but there aren't any. And so that's frustrating <laughs> cause you're like, I know where this is going to end up. How dare you not give me a little bit of it? But Alex Aja is a good director. He understands horror. I appreciate that he's sticking with the genre and that he wasn't like, didn't make one horror movie. He's like, no, I'm doing Marvel movies, you know, like yeah. he is sticking with it. And it's like, we got him and like Fede Alvarez and that's like it. Right. You know, so Get Fede Alvarez, a Marvel movie. <laughs> no, I don't want him to. Do I, I mean, don't I don't want him to do that. either. Cause then they'll just get, it, shoot up you won't be able to you won't be able to, won't be able to tell it's a Fetty Alvarez movie I well that's know? I want one like, where you can tell it's a yeah. Fetty Alvarez movie <laughs> it'll never happen Shane's house never blood happen. everywhere Disney it'll never Just, happen it's like make it one multiverse they accidentally walk into and then walk back out of that's all you gotta do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever uh, this yeah this one really pissed me off for like years after the first time I saw it just cause I felt like it was insulting my intelligence as a viewer but like I guess it's not because it didn't it doesn't, it doesn't leave any breadcrumbs, so it's just kind of like expecting you to just go with whatever logic it hands you, you know? So it's not really thinking you're stupid. It's just thinking you bought the ticket, you're going to take the ride. So I appreciate that. It, the gore effects are great. Uh, a home invasion movie is always terrifying. It's got a lot of good stuff going for it, and I think that the good stuff outweighs the annoying things. They're not even bad things. They're just annoying, you know? And the juice is worth the squeeze. Where did I just, <laughs> <laughs> Where did I just hear that? The other day? Yeah. It's yeah. It's not a perfect movie. I, I feel like I've made my peace with it over the years <laughs> since the first time Acceptance. I watched it. I do think there are much better French extremist movies out there, but this is a good place to start. If this is not your cup of tea, maybe then don't go further into the genre. Because guess what? It only gets worse and more yeah, horrifying if, from I here. I was going to say, if this is not your... T why did you wander into the, to a, a genre called French Extreme? Like <laughs> right. Yeah. Take it from someone who doesn't really care for it. This is a good one to stop at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, this is your barometer. If it goes well, then keep going. If it doesn't, then it's not for you. And that's fine. It doesn't have to be for everybody. It was a short-lived time for a reason, I'm sure. You know? Um, so I think I'm going to recommend it. I think... You have to see it, but if it's your second time watching it, don't expect there to be breadcrumbs. Right, there's not. it's not going to make any more sense. No, it's it's just you're just like okay, well, I guess I have to accept this, you know. <laughs> so just resign yourself to that and enjoy the gore effects. Enjoy it. the acting is good, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a small cast. It everything looks good. Nothing about it feels small budget. So just just enjoy what it is. Take it for what it is. Plot holes and all. You know, uh, this is part we could probably edit mm -hmm. out of the podcast, but like watching it tonight, heck, so soon after yeah. Halloween Kills. Yeah. Uh, no, keep, you got to keep this in. You saw the, okay. the, the saw. Well, it, there, there's so much like 
Halloween, the two new Halloween movies mm-hmm. seem to have that kind of like, we just want to be relentless, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is relentless like is a great word for, for it. this yeah. movie, right? Yep. It's like there's a relentless to it. But ironically, like, that's not what I think of when you think of Halloween. Halloween is like a suspense mm-hmm. kind of thing. Exactly. Texas Chainsaw. That's relentless. Is relentless, yeah. you know, horror. And this, you know, it's like, but the new Halloween movies are like cribbing from, and I don't right. know if it just seems like because this guy's, he has his back. Uh, the 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 way that the the overalls fit him it was like yeah. that's the Michael Myers back right you know <laughs> and it's like he could be Michael Myers and it's like we're just gonna be like relentless right. he's just gonna kill people and it's right. all right. suspense and go 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 I, I you rem- reminded me of one other thing I wanted to say Colin is that um I was talking with loyal listener C Huds about like this movie and the effect this movie kind of had not just like French extremism but like. This wasn't the first, but in the 2000s, it was an early entry and like it was the main character all along. Mm. And he brought up a bunch of movies that I completely forgot existed that just aped this Mm. idea. So skip forward if you don't want to hear a bunch of spoilers for movies. But here we go. Secret Window. Mm -hmm. Dream House. Hide and seek. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. He named a couple yeah. other ones I can't remember, yeah. but it's the human equivalent of like there was two monsters. Mm-hmm. It's like it was the main character the whole time. Like that became a thing for a bit yeah. in the early two thousands. Yeah. Speaking of Halloween Kills, it wasn't there a lot. It's like we're the monster. Yes, there was. Yeah. <laughs> and and it became a point in the two thousand two where like the way trailers were edited, you could be like, okay, well it's going to be it was that yeah. guy the whole time, you know? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. so yeah, it became such a cliche. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's good that we're not doing that anymore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hopefully, gonna, hopefully we're not doing it anymore. I hope not. I'm going to say one more thing about high tension. Yeah. Um I may, I think maybe it doesn't need to make sense. I'll I'll stick I'll double down on the fact that I think it's just the reason that's so plot holy and certain things don't make sense, I think this is weaving in and out of her like psyche without even telling us like what is uh, represented, what is in her head, and obviously what is really happening. And I think like because she literally fights her psyche to death. But the in truck the greenhouse. still has to come from somewhere. I know, somewhere. but I, right. I mean, well, okay. <laughs> the truck. Oh, fine. <laughs> Fuck that fucking truck. The, tr- the truck is the problem. The truck Why is, is the biggest the problem. I'm saying it doesn't, I'm saying it doesn't well, the part, matter. The part in the greenhouse when she's, when she's fighting the guy, I keep picturing the episode of The Office when Dwight is it demonstrating, fights himself, demonstrating the martial arts and he's fighting himself. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, That's all I was thinking like, of. Where, where's the scary movie scene of that? You know, yeah. where's the scary movie parody of like her just fighting herself yeah. in the yeah. greenhouse? Because she gets injured. You know, yeah. that's, that's uh, yeah. you know, it's like she gets injured from right. fighting him. It's like, where do these injuries that's fight come club. from? Where it shows that, that, that was another one she had brought up. Yeah, that's Fight Club. Right. Yeah. Right. And them just rolling around in the parking lot. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, we've been doing this for a while now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, there it is. All right. Well, thanks for sticking with us this long, uh, should you have chosen to come down this path. Uh, next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Colin, what are we going to watch next week? All right, so I've done a bunch of reminiscing about uh, the 90s. I keep complaining about how like all these movies in the 90s suck. And All right, I'm going to take you to where I was in the 1990s. Ooh, acid the, flashback. Well, and I've also been bringing up, uh, maybe off mic, uh, the works of Larry Fessenden. Ah. And so we're going to watch a Larry Fessenden movie. We're going to do Vampires in New York. It's a movie called Habit. And I just saw that it showed up on Shudder, I think, like last week. Cool. So. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about no. this, but I'm shocked no. you're picking a 90s movie. Right. I don't know this right. one. Yeah. yeah. These are the I'm 90s. Shocked. I'm bringing a 90s there movie. All right, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.